Hello and welcome to The Missing Link. I'm your host, Shane Buell, and on this channel I report the underreported and unreported aspects of today's current events and the missing links between them that will go unreported in the mainstream media. Today's video is going to be about fire NATOs. So what is the deal with fire NATOs? Are they a natural phenomenon or are they artificial? I do believe that fire NATOs can occur naturally. They normally do so very rarely, however, but lately we've seen a very dramatic uptick in the number of fire NATOs. Almost all of these large fires tend to have either small or large fire NATOs associated with them. One example that I want to show is from the Utah Deer Creek fire, which I reported on earlier. If you look at the base of this tornado, you can see that the flames are being pulled in a counterclockwise direction, which is natural for the northern hemisphere. But what looks a little bit unusual to me is that some of these licks of flame that get pulled up into the subvortices of the tornado look to be very laminar and very straight. I would expect subvortices of a tornado to be rather odd shaped. We've seen subvortices in tornadoes before that are snake like or even horizontal, but uh, those that we saw there were relatively straight and laminar, in my opinion, as opposed to turbulent vortices. That particular tornado actually was classified as an EF2 fire induced tornado by the National Weather Service. Winds of up to 122 miles an hour. And I do have another video of a survivor who experienced this tornado, and he's going to tell you about it here. That what had developed, what was looking looking like a tornado, turned into one very quickly. I looked up and I could see part of my part of one of my cabins flying up in the air, and uh, I, I just didn't didn't understand how that could be a tornado right now. I mean, you know, we were just in a fire, right? And so it came right over the top, top of us, and um, it was I could feel myself being lifted. Off, I was hanging onto the mirror of the truck, of the fire truck, and I was uh, just think, thankfully I could hang onto that mirror. And um, the debris was just passing by us, uh, drawing the, the oxygen to the fire, and we were in the middle of it. We all of a sudden realized that we were in the middle of this tornado. And uh, I'm just thankful that the, uh, the chief had the wisdom to get everybody back. So. After the fire, probably 10 minutes, um, blue sky came back. Every cabin that we could see was aflame. And I mean, there were big cabins and they were on fire um, to the point where you couldn't put them out. I would, I would estimate the winds were over 100 miles an hour easy. And uh, it was all started. And by the way, when this started, there was only a breeze. There wasn't even a breeze. There wasn't even the, the, the you'll see even the, Nothing is going on except for that fire itself created all of that tornado. Uh, even some of the grass in front of the cabins wasn't burned. It just took the structures. And, uh, and one of the connexes that we had actually put in front of one of the cabins up there, we put a nice connex that she had ordered. It lifted it up and threw it 1,100 feet. And they're pretty heavy. These connexes are several ton. The noise and the heat, we could feel the heat from a mile away. That's how big that was. I, I can't even explain it. And some of the crews out there saying it's the most intense fire whirl activity they had seen. All right, so there was quite a few anomalies that were reported in his account there. One of which is that the heat was felt from a mile away. Now, radiative heat should obey the inverse square law where the intensity of the heat drops off according to the inverse of the square of the distance. So for example, if you're four feet away from a radiative heat source, it is actually four times weaker than if you were only two feet away. So being twice as far away makes it four times weaker. So it's an inverse of the square of the distance. So a mile away would be very implausible for radiative heat to be felt so strongly at such a long distance. Not only are fire nados a relatively rare phenomenon, but fire nados of this strength are extremely rare. This is actually the second strongest fire nado ever documented. And the most powerful fire tornado that's ever been recorded was an EF3 in the Redding, California car fire in 2018. This fire had reached wind speeds of over 143 miles per hour, which make it equivalent to an EF3 tornado on the Fujita scale. Now, this is extremely rare, especially for something to be so powerful and so long lived. And I do actually have some footage. All right. So this is the car fire tornado in Redding, California in 2018. And you can see just how large and powerful this vortex is. You can see like sub vortices in there that actually do look turbulent. If there was no fire here, this would be a powerful and dangerous tornado. But then you add the fire element to it 
and uh, it becomes something that is absolutely deadly. So I have some more fire NATOs to show you. Some of these are recent and some of these are from years ago. However, I want to start with one that is actually from Gorman, California in 2022. I left the sound on so you can tell that this is normal speed. Wow. Wow. Amazing. That's one of the, wow, that is a tornado. And I want to point out that all of the fire is located to the left of this fire NATO. And there is no fire to the right of this, except for those little spot fires that are popping up, like the one you see on the far right there. You're going to see plenty more of those. There's one at the lower right. Where are these spot fires coming from? There's no embers on that side to be pulled in from that direction. Wow. We're going to see this several more times in this clip. And the only explanation that I have is other beams on the outside. There's more spot fires on the right. Where are these spot fires coming from? There was no embers wow. blowing from that direction. No, this is uh, this is the biggest one I've ever seen. And there's another spot fire lower right. There's several more. Where are these spot fires coming from? There's no embers coming from that direction. As the helicopter flies by, you see more nice. spot fires at the lower right. Several more spot fires, and then at the lower center, there's a huge one that just explodes out of nothing. Where are all these spot fires coming from? There's no embers on that side. And now you see a raging inferno where just a few seconds ago, there was nothing. What could have started the fire all the way out there so far away from the fire NATO? Keep in mind, all of the fire is to the left side and all this on the right is brand new. It just started. So yes, that was a very dramatic and very anomalous fire NATO and is one of the very best examples of a non-natural fire NATO, in my opinion. All right, so now the next thing I wanna show you is a fire NATO from Salix, Iowa. This was captured in April of 2025 by Dan Gottschalk. Now, what's really interesting to me is not the fire NATO in the foreground, but these smoke trails in the background that seem to be traveling on their own, and they seem to be self-contained and not obeying the normal wind. So in the background, you can see from right to left, there is a smoke trail that moves very quickly across the screen. You can see it here just barely as it moves behind the fire NATO. And I'm gonna zoom in and show this one more time in slow motion. And you can see right here as it moves from right to left, there is a smoke trail that maintains a relatively linear shape as it moves across. Now this is to me very suspicious. If there was a narrow beam, you could have an updraft within that beam that would trap the smoke and would relatively contain the smoke regardless of the wind outside of the beam. All right, so now I have another tornado, fire tornado that I wanna show you from Australia in 2013 that shows a similar phenomenon. Now what we're gonna see here is a smoke trail in front of the tornado that seems relatively linear and non-turbulent, and it seems relatively unaffected by the extreme fire whirl right behind it. So to me, that seems to be evidence of another perhaps self-contained beam with an updraft in it that not only has smoke contained within it, but it also seems to have a piece of debris that's being lofted as well. Now, the fact that this debris is not falling much quicker than it is indicates that there is probably either a very strong updraft or some sort of heat energy within there that's keeping it lofted for so long. So you can see the smoke trail travels right in front of the fire NATO, but is completely unaffected by the winds of the fire NATO itself. Now, the only thing that I can think of that would contain a smoke trail like that would be a beam. Now, these microwave beams are actually contained within a laser generated plasma beam, and they're about perhaps 12 to 18 inches in diameter on average. And that's why they're usually so small and so tightly wrapped so narrow and so linear in my opinion all right so now the next one that i want to go to is another very large fire nato that occurred in turkey this was on july 21st of 2025 now to me those licks of flame that shoot up in a rather linear and laminar fashion within what would allegedly be sub vortices of this tornado look very non-turbulent and they rise very quickly so that to me, that could possibly be an anomaly or it could be a sub vortice that's just very well organized with this, within this tornado. However, the clockwise nature of the tornado actually looks very suspicious to me, unless that's actually a reversed image. So if you've ever taken a video with your camera, you may have noticed that sometimes that the left and right are actually reversed. You'll mostly notice that if you capture like signs or images with lettering and the letters are actually reversed 
and it's backwards. So I don't know if that's what happened in this video or if this was truly an anti-cyclonic fire NATO. So fire NATOs themselves are already a rare phenomenon. However, large fire NATOs are extremely rare and an anti-cyclonic fire NATO is almost unheard of. I've only seen this a couple times and this is the largest and most dramatic and most recent example that I have. All right, so now earlier in April, April 30th of this year, there was a fire NATO in Israel. We did report on these Israel fires, but I wanna show just how tightly wrapped and how like straight this tornado is. Now there are some kinks in it, but you can see how this tornado doesn't fan out and get wider at the top. It's actually very narrow and very linear. Now to me, this looks like it could be contained within perhaps an 18 inch wide beam with the updraft is very well contained. Now, normally you would see these spread out you know, as they go up, but this one is very narrow and maintains its narrow shape all the way up. Just another one of those strange anomalies. Now as well, there I don't know how much fuel is here, but uh, it doesn't look like there should be enough you know, heat to maintain such an organized updraft. This isn't like a large wildfire with a large fire field. This looks like some debris or structure that's on fire, yet it's maintaining a relatively well-organized, very narrow and somewhat laminar vortex within this fire NATO. So the structure of this looks, like I said, very narrow, very straight and somewhat organized as far as the laminar flow within the vortex. To me, all of these are conditions that would be relatively uh, rare in, in, in nature. And so this would normally not be something that you would see. You would have to have like the perfect storm of conditions come together to create something like that naturally. And I do believe these are being assisted with non-natural means. All right, so now another fire that I wanna show you is from Portugal. And this is just from August 9th of 2025. You can see another very narrow, and this actually gets very tall and very narrow. And it's just very strange how it doesn't cone out at the top like you would normally expect. Look how skinny and thin and narrow this is. And once again, there's not an extremely large fire field and it looks like it's only grass that's on fire. So, you know, why would it be such conditions to create a sustained and very thin and very narrow vortex? To me, it looks a little bit suspicious. All right, so the next fire NATO that I wanna show you is from the Gifford fire in Santa Barbara County, California. This is burning near Santa Maria, California, where the uranium deposits that I spoke about earlier are located. Now, this is a very narrow, I would call smoke NATO because there really isn't much fire burning on the ground. You don't have a large fire field and there's not a lot of fuel burning. So in my opinion, you know, it would be very unlikely to have a fire NATO or smoke NATO in this case with those conditions. All right, so now there's another fire NATO that I want to show you. This is from the Monroe Canyon fire in Utah. This is in central Utah, and this does appear to be a very tall fire whirl. I'm not sure if this actually connects to a cloud base or a pyrocumulonimbus cloud, but it is at least a very tall fire whirl, if not an actual fire NATO. But once again, we can see that there's not a lot of fire at the base of this tornado. So what is causing the extreme heat and the extremely organized updraft that travels so far up that it could potentially reach a cloud base if there was a cloud base present. To me, that's also anomalous as well. All right, and then I have one more fire NATO to show. And this one is from Louvier, Colorado, which is on the south side of Denver. This is one of the southern suburbs of Denver. And you can see there's almost a second one trying to form there, but just look how violent this one is and how powerful. When there's almost no visible flames, I can hardly see any fuel burning, yet this is an extremely powerful extremely thin tornado that's being very well sustained by what looks like the addition of external energy. There's not enough flame here to account for the violent nature of what appears to be a small fire whirl, but it's extremely violent wind motion when there's very little to no fuel actually on fire there. So it looked like the fire was only occurring where the fire NATO was and nowhere else. All right. So now uh, let's see, that is all of the fire NATO footage that I have to cover, but I do want to show you another image. This is another fire NATO that was shown in the Meeker fire, which I had reported on earlier. Once again, it looks very narrow and very tall, and it looks like this could potentially reach up to a cloud base that may be present there. So this could either be a very tall fire whirl or a legitimate fire NATO if it reaches the cloud base. And it could also create its own cloud base, like I said, with a pyrocumulonimbus cloud. 
All right, and I do have one more fire NATO image to show. This one is actually from the Grand Canyon. This is burning at the Dragon Bravo fire, which is at the north rim of the Grand Canyon. It's not the most picturesque tornado as far as the smoke column goes. However, when you look at the base of this tornado, you can see that the fire itself is bent into a helix shape which uh, indicates the vorticity, even though the vortex isn't necessarily that visible in the smoke, you can clearly see the helical vortex present in the flames at the base of this fire nado. Okay, so normally fire nados are created by updrafts of hot air that come from the surface and they try to find their way up through the colder air. As they do so, the natural rotation of the earth imparts Coriolis forces onto this vortex and it starts to favor a counterclockwise rotation in the Northern hemisphere and a clockwise rotation in the southern hemisphere. Now, this is usually a surface phenomenon that creates these tornadoes, usually from wind shear that actually gets that updraft spinning. And they're usually normally, like I say, short-lived and weak. You know, the, the typical fire devil, which is a smaller fire tornado, is uh, normally, you know, not very large and not very long-lived and also not very powerful. And then you have like medium-sized fire whirls, which can also result from surface interactions of wind shear and rising updrafts. However, what we've just seen here with the EF2 and EF3 tornado is updrafts that are actually very highly sustained and very powerful vortexes. Now, what you would normally see in a surface wind shear with a fire updraft condition would be a quasi-linear convective system or QLCS tornadoes, which are created by updrafts that get spun by the wind shear, but they usually don't last very long. And it's that same wind shear, which usually will tear them apart. However, what we've seen here with the EF2 and EF3 tornadoes is that they have grown to the size of being self-sustainable, where they've reached either a cloud base or they've created their own cloud base of pyrocumulonimbus clouds. Now, this is where they say fires can create their own weather, is when they create these large pyrocumulonimbus clouds that take the place of a cloud base. And then if you can have a surface interaction that reaches all the way up into this pyrocumulonimbus cloud, it can become a quite self-sustaining and quite powerful fire nado. However, those are extremely rare and they should only happen naturally like one, once in a blue moon. However, we tend to see fire nados, at least fire devils or fire whirls at most of these fires lately. And now we're starting to see them get larger and more powerful and more sustained. All right, so that's all of the Fire NATO video and images that I have to show you for today. But I would also like to remind you that I covered this and more fire behavior anomalies in my book called Sound the Alarm, the Maui disaster that sparked a global awakening, which was written with Tracy Derwin of the Brush Chunky channel and Stephanie Perucci of Burn Back Better. And this can be found at themauibook.com. All right, so that's all I have for today. But if you would please subscribe to my channel, as well as like, comment, and share this video, it'll help give me a head start, and I would really appreciate it. So until next time, I'll see you guys later.